twirling of a baton involves lots of fascinating science. As a physicist, I'm interested in what makes these amazing baton tricks possible. Consider a two-turn toss. This is where the twirler must toss the baton high into the air and execute two complete turns before catching the baton again. To be successful, the twirler must plant their feet, toss the baton, monitor the baton while it's in the air, execute very rapid turns, and then catch the baton again. There is fascinating science in all phases of the toss. Let's focus on the spinning and the catching of the baton. The following is a movie clip of the two-turn toss, which we can analyze using scientific software here in the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh Physics Department. Here is a member of the Touch of Silver Twirling Corps. This twirler is about to do a two-turn toss. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Notice what the twirler does with her arms. Her arm is extended, but as she rotates, she pulls this arm in close to her hip. And then as she, as she turns, she plants those arms really close to her body. And this has the effect of making her turn fast enough so that she can execute two complete turns before she catches the baton again. We can capture the same effect just sitting in a chair. With my arms out, I spin relatively slowly, pull in much faster. This follows from the conservation of angular momentum. After the twirler tosses the baton, one may wonder how it is they can keep track of the baton as it's spinning through the air and how in the world can they catch the baton so reliably every time. To see how this is possible, I'd like you to focus on the twirler in the lower left corner of the screen. Let's watch her do her two-turn toss first. The baton goes up and comes back down and she catches it. See all these dots on the screen? These dots mark points on the baton. Let's roll the clip back. Right here, I've used a blue dot to mark one end of the baton and a red dot to mark the other. And then I've used a pink triangle to mark the center of the dot. And frame by frame, I keep track of these points. Notice how the ends of the baton execute a very complicated curl path. But the center of the baton, or the center of mass of the baton, executes a very well-ordered and smooth curve. Now the twirler is, is told to pay attention to the center of the baton and now you can see why. And it's also the center of the baton that they focus on in order to catch the baton. So you can see baton twirling involves lots of interesting science and we've only looked at two aspects of it.